Thirdly, gender quotas. This one should be quite a quick, t- quick topic, actually, but I want to talk about this because of everything that's been going on with this business of Scott Morrison now being apparently the pinup for uh, gendered violence against women, even though he's not actually done any of these things. He puts his daughters, he puts his wife at the centre of his life. Uh, his whole life and example is opposed to this sort of behaviour. But of course, with uh, the cultural Marxist stuff, guilt doesn't run by individuals, it runs in tribes. And so rather than just quietly allowing the due process to play out for these rape cases and make sure that the people that did it actually go down for it and end up in jail, no, this has to be weaponized into a political cause against an entire tribe. What's the entire tribe? Well, it is the white, able, powerful men Scott Morrison is the kingpin of that group. He must repent. And that's exactly what we've seen in the last few days. The media have trawled him out and he's basically groveled, is basically what he's done to make the pain stop. I'm not sure that it will stop. Now, if you don't, just uh, just to be clear, if for those of you who are viewing this as a segment by itself and haven't seen the earlier segment, uh, the Women's March for Justice has made it clear that this is their ideology. It's not, it's not hidden. So I'm not saying anything particularly revolutionary, except that I'm pointing, joining the dots for us. But here's the thing, the upshot is that the Liberal Party are tearing themselves apart over this age-old gender quota debate. Do they need to have quotas for women in politics, in ministerial positions? Should politicians be getting plum rolls because they're female in order to boost female numbers in positions of power? Now, there's a few things to be said here. Firstly, I just want to make this clear. It seems that identity politics has so affected us that we've forgotten that what is good is good for all. That righteous decision-making, good governance, responsible use of power are the same for a politician doing, whether that politician doing the things is black or white or gay or straight or man or woman or able or disabled or whatever else. The classes defined by identity politics are just not that relevant when it comes to accessing truth. There's some kind of weird Gnostic view of the world here where because of the melanin concentration in your skin or something like this, you have some access to a different plane of truth. And therefore, if we're going to put people in positions like politics, well, we need to have quotas of all these different kinds of truths. No, no, what's right is right for everybody. What's good governance? What's righteous governance? Is righteous governance for everybody? It just doesn't work that way. Good is good for all. Evil is evil for all. If we accept the identity politics line, there's no end to quotas. Women, men, uh, then you've got all the different ethnicities, you'd have quotas for them, all the different sexualities. What if you had a quota for all the different genders? You'd have a lot of politicians. Uh, You know, it doesn't, it just doesn't end. Uh, it's a crazy path to start walking down. The identity politics line is wrong. It doesn't work that way. But there's something more. I'm interested to investigate this question of what it says about us as a society when we seriously believe that women should have a 50% representation, particularly in political and corporate settings. What do I mean? Well, do you know there's an opportunity cost to that? That is to say it means that we lose something. And it means bluntly, let's say the obvious, it means we lose full-time mothers. It means, actually, let's say, a little bit less than that, let's say it means we lose most of the time mothers, because that's an exceedingly common demographic for good reasons. No, I'm an employer uh, and part-time work to most of the time mothers. It's very, very common. And these are women who have basically their hearts in their family, but they work part-time because they raise more money to complement you know, the other income in the family, that kind of thing. We lose this. We lose this aspect of motherhood, obviously. So a career like this, is basically a career for career women. Is that good to force that in such a way that it's pretty much all women? Is it worth it? What does it say about where we rank family in the hierarchy of importance? What does it say about where we rank motherhood in the hierarchy of importance? What does it say about where we rank children in the hierarchy of importance. What does it say about our attitude to some of the things that women commonly dedicate their lives to for their families? The truth is, we basically don't care about those things. We don't encourage those things. You know, I heard the the liberals very often state their economic policy in terms of getting as many women into the workforce as possible. I've heard that many times from the current government. We don't care about the implications. We don't care about the other side of this coin. It's all about forcing families to lose both parents to the workforce. The truth is we don't care about the thing that's being left behind, the family. And I know that because what I'm saying and what I'm about to say is mocked at the very best. 
it's attacked with vigor as oppressive and downtreading and me being a white patriarchal man or whatever at the very worst. A woman who serves an employer does an uncontroversial thing. It is affirmed and it is uncontroversial to affirm it. Quotas, right? Completely uncontroversial. A woman who serves a family does a controversial thing and affirming it in particular actually trying to calibrate policy settings to encourage it or allow it, because many women would want it. And many who can't do it nonetheless want it. You know, that is controversial. A woman who seeks power is applauded as strong and independent and liberated. A woman who seeks to serve is overlooked. She's held in low esteem. It is interesting to me that one of the biggest themes in scripture is the godly mother who is loved and used by God. It's a theme that is consistently overlooked by many a woman's Bible study, many a woman's conference, but it is a strong theme. I've done this at a GPS program. You go through them, there's heaps. Let's take just a few. Jochebed, mother of Moses, Aaron and Miriam, who hid her son from Pharaoh and prayed for him and he became the mightiest Old Testament figure. Or Leah, whose story of finding favour with God, despite her troubles, is told through the names that she actually gives uh, for her children, uh, climaxing with uh, now I will praise God is the meaning. I think that's the meaning of Judah. I hope that's right. But it goes through the story of her travails, through the names. Hannah, whose son changed the world. Um, Samuel, what an incredible, incredible son, uh, because she prayed for him and promised him up to God. Or Mary, whose unconscious virtue made her the mother of Christ. She who had no power, no politics, nothing whatsoever, except herself and her heart to serve God, and God used her motherhood to save the world, literally, in that case. Now, that is an expression of God's affirmation of the mother. It is unbelievably strong. In fact, in Genesis 3.15, the first ever promise that a Messiah would come to save the world, how was he to come through the seed of the woman? An archaic expression meaning he's going to have a mum. He's going to be born into the world. I don't like quotas because, not because I don't think any women should be in politics and business. I do not think that, okay? So don't take that away from this. I just don't like quotas because it says something about where women ought to be. And I don't think we can say that they ought, ought to choose this. I don't think that's right. Um, All women will not be in politics and business. And I wouldn't expect to see quite as many women in those places or running the country as men if families were wonderfully healthy and rich and strong. I wouldn't expect it. And I don't think we should expect it. Um, Do you know, since I'm saying controversial things, I might as well read Titus 2, 3 to 5. Uh, This is controversial, but it's scriptural, man. This is the Bible. Older women, it says, likewise, would be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good, so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, etc., so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Why did I read that? Simply to say this, a mother who keeps a home does a fine thing does a virtuous thing, does a biblical thing, does a good thing, okay? It doesn't mean that women don't belong in other places. It's not a matter of exclusion, but it is a matter of focus. And I think the biblical, the Christian focus is family, not power. And it bothers me that there are young women who are believing a lie about all this, throwing themselves headlong into career only to find that she doesn't have a career at all. Like 99.9% of the world, she has a job. And the job is affected by the curse, right? Because the curse was a curse on work, remember, back in Genesis. Oh, and it's a trudge and it's a toil and it's just not that fulfilling. And she starts to think, well, maybe I want something else. And by that time, she might have missed her chance to marry and have a family. Now, I say this because I see it all around me. I'm in that age bracket where I see women all around me my age making this discovery. It really is painful. It's not good because they have not been trained by older women, as it says in Titus, because they have listened to lies from the world around them. And half the time, it's probably not even their fault. This is not good. If you're woke, then you're just going to say, well, that's a white, powerful, able, wealthy man viciously oppressing the ladies, doing harm to them and violence uh, in order to cling fervently to my own power, you know, because I want to be the powerful one. Um, Whatever. If I wanted power, I would have starting businesses and making squillions of dollars. But to those of you who actually listen and hear truth, well, as the scriptures say, he that has an ear, let him hear. And the truth is, quotas, I don't reckon, I've got no problem with women being in politics, but quotas, what does it say about what we're willing to give up? I think, controversially, sadly, it's a bad idea. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, then make sure to hit the like button. If you want to never miss another video again, make sure to subscribe, or you can right now watch more videos right here. Cheers.